getting out of the mask at a, at a good rate. We're re-inhaling some of that. Now here we're going to discuss carbon dioxide, what limits and the side effects. Okay. Now carbon dioxide is what we exhale. Workplace exposure limits are 5,000 parts per million, averaged over an eight-hour work shift. This is for work, eight hours, not children wearing masks for eight hours in school. NIOSH recommends airborne exposure limit. REL is 5,000 parts per minute, average over a 10 hour work shift period. Not, and 30,000 parts per million not to be exceeded during any 15 minute work period. ACGIH, the threshold limit for this is 5,000 parts per million, average over an eight hour work shift. And 30,000 parts per million as a stale short term exposure limit. Carbon dioxide decreases the amount of, avail of available oxygen routinely. Measure oxygen content to make sure it is at least 19.5% by volume. This is the OSHA standards in America, NIOSH standards, and ACGIH standards. There is no CDC standard. CDC has no regulation over the oxygen that we breathe. And that's these masks have carbon dioxide underneath them. CDC has no recommendation, no rules, no guidelines to be making you wear a mask. As you can see, they're not even listed here. All right. Now, we're going to show you the side effects. Okay, now, other effects. Severe poisoning can affect the brain, causing personality changes and loss of vision. Vision. You know how many kids are becoming angry and stuff in school? Well, it's changing the personality because it's changing the brain cells. The brain cells are, are being affected immediately by this within the first 30 seconds, let alone eight hours. Medical testing. If symptoms develop or overexposure is suspected, the following is recommended. Evaluate for brain effects such as changes in memory, concentration, sleeping patterns, and mood, especially irritation irritability, and social withdrawal, as well as for headaches and fatigue, examine the eyes and vision. An evaluation should be included, a careful history and past present symptoms with an exam. Medical tests that look for damage that is already done are not a substitute for controlling exposure. All right. Now along with other effects, you also have chronic health effects. Following chronic long-term health effects can occur at some time after exposure of carbon dioxide. It can last from months or years. Reproductive hazards. There is limited evidence that carbon dioxide causes spontaneous abortions. So that is a factor also. At least children were in these masks eight hours a day, well above the concentration. And was never the standards were never set for children to wear masks. There was never any testing done. CDC has no regulation in this area. Why are you putting masks on? And also now you're going to note where the potential exists for exposures over 5,000 parts per million, use a NIOSH approved supplied ear respirator with full face piece operated in, in a pressure demand or other positive pressure mode. That's for 5,000 parts per million. All right. Now you've seen some of these tests we're going to show you are going to be pretty close to that. But all day for a child is, is just amazing. All right. Now, before um, we have now we also have note before entering a confined space. Technically, a confined space is your face now because you've got a mask on there. Carbon dioxide present, check to make sure sufficient oxygen at 19.5 exists. And you can see under these masks, that never exists. It's always lower than 19.5. All right, now we're moving on to hydrogen sulfide. We exhale hydrogen sulfide. We don't normally inhale it. Now, hydrogen sulfide can affect you when breathed in and may pass through your skin. 
Hydrogen sulfide can irritate the eyes on contact. Long-term exposure to low levels can cause pain and redness of the eyes and blurred vision. Uh, that's if you're inhaling it right in front of your eyes and everything else. But you're usually inhaling it right through your face mask, but it can come up into your eyes through your face mask that you're wearing there, those paper ones. All right? Now, exposure to hydrogen sulfide, which we do exhale, can irritate the nose and throat. Inhaling hydrogen sulfide can irritate the lungs. Higher exposures may cause a buildup of fluid in the lungs. Pulmonary edema, medical emergency. Exposure can cause nausea, dizziness, confusion, headache, and trouble sleeping. Very high levels can cause unconsciousness and even death. All right. So what are the legal airborne limits permissible under PAL for a we can be breathing in? 20 parts per million not to exceed at any time. And 50 parts per million as a maximum peak not to exceed it during any 10 minute work period. The recommended airborne exposure limit is 10 parts per million. It should never exceed during any 10 minute work period. The ACGIH threshold limit value is one part per million average over an eight hour work shift. And five parts per million is a stale short term exposure limit. The above exposure limits are for air levels only. So that means inhaling it. Now we exhale it, we will automatically start to inhale it because we have a paper fast mask on that is not designed for us to exhale air that we breathe. All right, now we're moving on to carbon monoxide. We exhale that either we have a wood stove in the house, we are going to ex uh, exhale that, we're going to inhale some of that because of low exposures to that. Uh, if you smoke, you're going to re-inhale that. If you cook, I found that people who cook over a stove a lot will, will have that in their system also. All right, and you'll see some of the tests here shortly. We'll show some more video live tests. Um, carbon monoxide can affect you when inhaled. All right, carbon monoxide may be a three-digit handle with extreme caution. Exposure during pregnancy can cause lowered birth weight in offspring. All right, inhaling carbon monoxide can cause headaches, dizziness, lightheadedness, and fatigue. Higher exposures to carbon monoxide can cause sleepiness hallucinations, convulsions, and loss of consciousness. Carbon monoxide can cause personality and memory changes, mental confusion, and loss of vision. Extremely high exposure to carbon monoxide can cause the formation of carbon monoxide that can cause bright red color of the skin, a mucus and membrane causing trouble breathing, collapsing, convulsions, and death. And carbon monoxide can affect the heart and damage the nervous system. Now this this mask now that we're using is a is a, a one that goes to a nurse, and uh, these are the oxygen levels under her mask that she's breathing. I want you guys to remember this for the next video. Look at the levels. You have to write them down. I want you to see what the levels are going to be. All right, now this is a, a little child at the uh, at probably nursery school somewhere. They're trying to put a mask on a child, and, and, and uh, they can't breathe with the mask on, and that is a pretty heavy mask. I'm not sure what the oxygen levels were, but you saw my last video, all right, with these masks that nurses are wearing. And this is a, a big mask. Look at that. Are you kidding me? You know what his oxygen levels are? Nothing is, is, is above what it's supposed to be. He's going to be breathing around 15 parts per million oxygen, carbon dioxide at at least 4 or 5 parts per million, and he want to put that mask on for 8 hours a day for that child? And you don't think there's going to be brain damage and everything else done to that child, lung damage? All right, now this, this clip you can see a cop is choking a, a young teenager out because she's not wearing a mask. And on the right, we're going to show you what the oxygen levels are under these masks. So you're looking at oxygen levels dropping as low as 17, 16 parts per million, carbon dioxide going up almost 2 parts per million, 2.06, 2.10. And they want her to wear a mask, and she's choosing not to because she can't breathe. These police officers were never trained on oxygen training levels. Nobody was ever trained on how to wear these masks.